<laughs> Some people take road trips so they can get to their destination, but we take road trips so we can experience the journey. And rather than showing a stereotypical cross-country road trip, we decided to take it one step further. We want to drive from Florida to Alaska. I took my STI swap Subaru Forester, and Ben took his Evo 9 MR on a journey of over 10,000 miles. We have only three weeks to travel oh through God. 23 states and two Canadian provinces. This three weeks was the longest block of time that we had available to us all year, so we wanted to take advantage of it. Our goal, to see as much of the continent as possible. Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Ben. And this is our intern, Devin. <laughs> and we are here in uh, very beautiful and also very wet, hot, and humid uh, Tallahassee, Florida with our two cars, my Evo and Ben's Forester. Yeah, we plan to take both of these cars on a road trip. Uh, and it's not just any road trip. We're gonna take this from here in Tallahassee, Florida up to Anchorage, Alaska, uh, which is about six or 7,000 miles and back. Advance Auto was kind enough to sponsor this video series. Uh, so they've loaded us up with uh, different parts of serpentine belts, uh, brake pads, brake rotors. So hopefully, if we do break down, we can just fix it on the side of the road. Yeah, I've got a ton of tools in the back of the car. You might even notice the rear end squatting down from all the tools that I've got. I'm, I'm a little concerned, I'm a little worried, but uh, I think we've got enough stuff between both cars and both ski boxes that we'll be set anywhere we are. Middle of Canada, we should be okay. Well, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, uh, so let's start at the very beginning. 7.30 a.m. and we just got some food, some breakfast uh, to keep us awake. We're leaving town now and uh, we got 11 hours to drive to Florida, our starting point. The trip begins with a short and easy 11 hour drive down to Tallahassee, Florida. This is where we're going to begin the cross continental road trip. The entire trip should take about 177 hours on the road, so this first 11 hours should be a drop in the bucket. Back when the Evo was designed, it was kind of designed as more of like a sports car, something to be used for spirited driving and track use and stuff like that. So they really kind of cut out some of the nicer amenities that like cruise control, um, sound insulation. This isn't exactly a road trip car, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can make it work. All right, we are out of Virginia, which means we can run a radar detector now. No speeding tickets, there's only like one province in Canada that uh, doesn't allow them. And Virginia is the only state in the U.S. that doesn't allow it, so we're good to go for a while now. Not that we're going to speed. Well, every time we go on a road trip, we'll always take some rental car or some like minivan or something boring, and you always wish that you had, you know, your fun car whenever you come across like a fun road or something like that. So that, this is kind of that opportunity for us to get to drive our our cool cars uh, in cool places. It's a great feeling to take your own car out on a road trip like this, but there are definitely some drawbacks like fuel economy. Neither of our cars is exactly what you'd call fuel efficient. And after the first few fill ups, we're averaging 22 miles per gallon of delicious premium gas. If I've done the math right, that means we'll burn about 974 gallons of fuel during this trip. A worthy price to pay though, for the enjoyment of driving our sweet, sweet turbo cars. We've made it 300 miles, and the STI six-speed in my Forester is making a very comforting grinding noise. So we took a quick stop in South Carolina for lunch, and I told Ben the news. Transfer case uh, bearings are bad, so they're grinding. They've been grinding, and I just thought the trans was loud, but they've been getting a little bit louder as I've been going. So I talked with Intertech, and they said transfer bearings are likely bad. And uh, yeah, I have to get that fixed. Trans has to come apart. Well, uh, you ever wondered which would break first? A Subaru or a Mitsubishi. In this one use case of a car that was swapped a week ago. This answer has been answered. This question has been answered. My car was an automatic a week ago. Evo for the win. Mitsubishi for the win. The closest shop I trusted was in Atlanta, which is about one and a half hours off the path. There's a shop there called the All Pro Subaru, and they're gonna look at the Forester to see what the grinding noise is. So I am here at All Pro Subaru because uh, my transmission was making some noise. Uh, so a friend recommended that I come here and they're currently working on the Forester to see what that transmission noise is. Um, hopefully I'll get back going tonight and we can make it to Florida 
as originally planned, um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, he's got three people back there working on it. Uh, they took apart the back end of the transmission because uh, it's making some noise and uh, the bearings are fine. So that's good. That's yeah. been heck yeah, bro. So that's good. That means we don't have to order bearings. Turns out the grinding noise is just my drive shaft that isn't quite lined up right. They changed some things around to line it up better and we're back on the road. Only a few hours more to go today. We've got about five hours until we hit Tallahassee, uh, which is the starting point of this trip. Technically, even though we've been driving already, if, if this is any indication of what's to come for the rest of this trip, then we've really got to cut out for us. Uh, as you can tell, it's raining very loudly. Uh, I can't see anything. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to get some new wiper blades. So, we've actually arrived in Tallahassee which is where the trip was supposed to start. Uh, it only took us, it only took us 18 hours to do a 10 and a half hour drive. Um, so, you know, I mean, we're already on schedule. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. Uh, yeah, I've got a huge dent in my hood. Um, that was super fun. This side skirt over here is uh, just beat, beat the heck up. Um, I, I damaged something else. Oh, yeah, I scuffed my front lip. I exploded some frogs as well. Uh, how many how many miles have we gone? Not even like 700. So that would be not even one eleventh of the actual distance that we're going to drive. What's this going to look like with 11 times more bugs on it? Well, I brought a detailer, so hopefully we never have to find out. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm basically going to be detailing like the surface of the moon with all the craters and scratches and paint chips that it's going to have. Considering that this is the damage from just one day of driving. So yeah, like the most inefficient first day of the trip possible. And this wasn't even officially part of the trip. Uh, but we got it done. We're in Tallahassee. Tomorrow morning we're going to shoot an intro. And then we're actually going to start our drive from Florida to Alaska. Right on. Let's, uh, let's start this trip. <laughs> Alright, this, this interview's over. Man, what a trip. Yeah, no, we're, we're good. We're here. We're here at the, the start of the trip. The start of the trip, and we already had one breakdown just trying to get down. No, 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 no. It wasn't a breakdown. I was just, just concerned with some noises that we got checked out. We're all good. Everything's it was a good. It's a three hour, three hour concern. Yeah, nope, we're fine. We're here. Uh, ready to go. <laughs> all right, so today the goal is to drive from Tallahassee uh, all the way to what? Today we're going to go Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas, yeah. So that's a. About a 13 hour, 14 hour drive. Okay. We'll see if we can probably end up making that a 17 hour drive somehow. I mean, that, that sounds mild. Let, yeah, it is mild. Let's yeah. aim for 20. <laughs> I think we can make this last we'll three today. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're going to hop into the car, uh, go get some parts, and hit the road. Before leaving Tallahassee, we wanted to make sure that if our cars broke down on the trip, we'd have some parts on hand to fix them. So right now we are at an advanced auto distribution center uh, here in Tallahassee where we're going to pick up a bunch of parts uh, for the Evo and the Forcer, just like wear parts, serpentine belts, brake rotors, brake pads, stuff like that. Just stuff that might break over the course of the trip uh, that we can just easily replace uh, on the side of the road or something like that. We need more parts because that's not enough. We have to get some more brake pads and belts, serpentine belts. Because that's a common thing that goes bad and is really easy to fix on the side of the road. Devin, who's going to break the first belt? Um, probably you. And just on the other side of town, we got the last few parts that we needed. So we got a couple more more parts. We got Rain-X wipers for Ben. We got more brake pads for Ben. Uh, we got a bunch of belts, most of which are probably for Ben. Old one, new one. The rain yesterday had me stuck going about 45 miles an hour. So I installed some Rain-X wipers to help with the visibility to be able to keep up with the speed limit and get back on track. We're finally leaving Tallahassee. A little bit before noon. The goal is Austin, Texas. Got about 13 hours of driving ahead of us. Should be an easy day. Hopefully nothing breaks. Should be an easy day. The goal for today is Austin, Texas, which is about 870 miles away. 12 and a half hours on the road. It should go by quickly. 
but just like yesterday, there's a lot of rain ahead of us. It rains a lot in Florida, and getting a good amount of rain. As we crossed into Alabama, the rain had cleared up and we were finally starting to make some good progress. Well, that was until this happened. Uh, we had a little mishap. Ben hit his brakes rather suddenly. I hit my brakes also rather suddenly to not hit Ben. And the person behind us did not have Brembos. So now I have this. Uh, like I said, my car is slowly being destroyed as we drive across the country. It is what it is. Um, I'm sure it's, it'll buff out or something. It probably won't, but we'll see. A few hours later and we're almost to Texas. The temperature has risen to 95 degrees and the Forester has encountered another problem. The AC doesn't work on the Forester. It's been intermittent. It's come on and off. Meanwhile, in the Evo, the AC has been working perfectly and Devin and I couldn't be happier. doesn't kick on, the AC compressor doesn't kick on. Let's go! Uh, I think either the compressor clutch is bad or there's a leak in the system somewhere. I mean, I can recharge the Freon, but I don't have a way to evacuate the Freon. Uh, and I don't want to just let it off into the environment, because, uh, you know, it's not the environment. Everything was going as planned, and we're really starting to make good progress. As night begins to fall, we cross the border into Texas. And the only thing currently broken is my air conditioning, which isn't a problem, just inconvenient considering that now we're in Texas. Every now and then we stop and I fiddle with the compressor to see if I can get it to work. Uh, no idea, I just checked it again and the level seems to be perfectly fine. The compressor has to be worn out. Well, like, look, you can literally watch it drop. In my opinion, the really fascinating part about this road trip uh, is that it is so poorly planned out and horribly risky. There are actual genuine risks to this road trip. We can and probably will break down and we don't have like a backup camera crew or anything like that. None of this is like inflated for reality television. It is just genuinely a situation where we could get stuck in the middle of nowhere Texas with a broken Evo or a broken Subaru or something like that. And we haven't even gotten to Canada yet. It is three o'clock in the morning right now. We're still driving. My transmission is leaking onto my exhaust, which is not a good sign because that means oil is leaking onto the hot exhaust and could potentially you know, catch fire and stuff like that, uh, which is no bueno. So, in Austin is Cop Tuning. Uh, the headquarters of Cop Tuning is in Austin, Texas. And uh, they're good friends of ours, and we're hopefully going to be able to get this car up on one of their lifts uh, so I can actually get underneath it and work on it uh, and change out the rear transmission seal. Hopefully we can find a part for that. Hopefully Advance has that part and we'll get that taken care of um, and be back on the road as quickly as possible. Uh, it is eight o'clock, nine o'clock, nine o'clock here in Austin, Texas. Uh, and we are at this hotel, lovely hotel here. And uh, we, Devin and I are gonna go out to uh, Cobb Tuning. Uh, they're right around the corner here and we're gonna see if we can fix a transmission leak that I have in the Forester. But hopefully I can get the Subaru fixed and we'll be back on the road in only a few hours. We'll see. So this is the uh, drive shaft mounting bolt and Cobb just fabbed this up. Uh, basically drilled a hole through, uh, a, what is it called, dowel, dowel rod uh, of aluminum. So this is gonna space out 
that uh, drive shaft to lower it down a little bit, um, but still give it strength so it's not going to wobble all over the place and stuff like that. So this should give us a better drive shaft angle and uh, hopefully cause it to not leak. I can't say enough good things about cop tuning. They were so willing to drop everything and help me get this fixed. And I'm confident now that the new drive shaft angle and transmission seal that we got from Advance won't leak. This should be the last of the problems that I have with the Forester on this trip, and we're good to go for another 9,000 more miles. Okay, so we're in Texas now, uh, the heart of Texas. We passed Austin and all that stuff. Super, super flat out here, and we just hit our first freeway that has an 80 mile an hour speed limit. Most of my gear ratios are not super tall or intended for Texas. Uh, it is what it is. No breakdown so far. Uh, just trying to get through Texas, through New Mexico, and into Arizona. So, see you in another 13 hours. It's 3 o'clock and we still have 13 hours left to drive today. Because of the delays that Ben's Forcer caused, we need to drive through the night to get back on schedule. Of course, that's right about the time my Evo decided to have its first problem. I have an axle boot in the rear that is starting to fling grease. Uh, something, I guess, nicked the boot or uh, the... The snap ring is failing, um, but anyways, grease is coming out of the uh, CV joint, which is going to cause an issue if I let it run out of grease and the internals uh, just like eat themselves. So right now all we have is painter's tape. I'm just gonna like wrap some painter's tape around to try and keep the grease inside and seal that. Um, and then when we get to a Walmart, I can get some actual duct tape and see if that is a little bit better. And then maybe down the road I can either pick up like a replacement boot or a whole new axle. But the problem is that nobody really makes these axles anymore, so we'll see. But right now I'm just gonna try and band-aid it. It's 10 p.m. and we're in the middle of Texas, which means there's no stores around. So we'll have to keep driving for a few more hours until we find the first place to stop. We just got to a Walmart. Uh, I'm gonna check and see if that painter's tape is still on <laughs> at all. Uh, and then we're gonna get some actual duct tape uh, to redo the job because painter's tape is not a long-term solution. Nor is duct tape, but I don't have a new axle, so. I think the painter's tape is still on. And I haven't lost any more grease. Okay, so I've got crazy glue, I've got duct tape, and I've got like this uh, Flex Seal liquid rubber sealant coating. Uh, and I'm gonna do all three of them uh, and see if maybe that'll just keep it from leaking for a relatively long period of time. Now, I realize this isn't exactly the correct way to repair a CV boot, but since we're in the middle of Texas, in the middle of the night, we don't really have that many options. So I applied some crazy glue, and I sprayed like flex seal stuff, which basically is uh, liquid rubber. It turns into rubber like once you spray it on there, and that seems to actually be doing pretty good, so I'm gonna let it cure for a couple of minutes and then throw the wheel back on and see how we do. I gave the rubber about five minutes to dry and we hit the road for a long drive ahead of us. A few hours later, the sun had risen and we had made it to Arizona. It's only been four days on this road trip so far and we've covered 2,500 miles. There's still over 8,000 miles to go, and I can't wait. We've planned to meet up with a friend in LA to go cruising the canyons, but that'll have to wait until next episode. So, we'll see you next Saturday.